Okay, we back again for part three uh, of this series. So let's go ahead and get started on it. All right, let's see. Okay, this is where we left off at. Now, let's look at these amendments because some of y'all might not know about these and some of y'all do, but I hear even black people all the time talking about the, the 13th and the 14th amendment. Uh, let's, okay, let's see if this really is gonna help you out. So the 13th Amendment primary tabs, section one, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. So this is the reason why, with you out there living wild and running around, because you know, Esau done put all this stuff in your mind saying that you got to get rich. You, you got to have paper. You got to, you know, you need all this money and all this type of stuff. And, you know, with these different rappers he done produced and, and put money in their pocket to, to dance in front of you and entertain you and all this type of stuff. You got to drink this type of liquor. You got to drive this type of car. You got to have this type of bling on your hand. You running around with stacks in your hand, money in your mouth and all this foolishness, right? But guess what? So... If you see them doing it, you want it, but you don't have the same opportunity that they have or things just happen that don't, don't happen to be working out for you. So what do you do? You out here hustling, you out here killing, you out here running wild. This is what this is set up for. Cause as soon as you get this, so as soon as you duly convicted, now you on the back of, you really on a level, level of, of a slave. Why? Because they're going to put you in jail and you're going to be working for five or 10 or maybe a quarter a day pressing license plates or making furniture or out in Texas, you out there helping grow fish and you in Florida, you out in the swamps cutting down weeds and building dishes and all the roads and all this type of stuff. But this is this is what happens, though, because you put yourself in this place. Now, the 14th Amendment says all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. So this is why you have, when these foreigners come over here, they have kids, they try to hurry up and have kids. So that kid in their mind is a citizen of this United States, but you ain't, and you've been here. Now watch this, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. We're gonna show you, they are, they, Jim Crow, they came up with that. So that's, that's so again, this is, this, all this does not apply to you. See, we shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life. Well, we see this every day, the police killing you every day. And, and, and I mean, 90% of the time, they're not being, what, duly convicted. And you know this. So you out here marching and setting stuff on fire and Black Lives Matter and all this stuff. We're going to show you in another video where all that, that's all garbage. They, I mean, Martin Luther King was a paid person. And that girl that just ran off with all these millions of, I mean, I'm just trying to show you something. These people are paying them to do this. So your life really don't mean nothing. Right, you don't have the same health care. Your schools ain't getting the same books. Oh, it's still going on. So what do you do? You try to get your kid and take them out here to a zone, a uh, zone one school or whatever, a triple A class school. You know, he want to play football, so you try to move out somewhere so he can go to one of the, these other schools. So that I mean, I, I give you an example of this, and I, I'm, I'm a, then we're gonna keep going. It was a school up here in Gwinnett I had went to, and I was doing some work out there. That school was a totally different school. I ain't never seen no schools like this in my life. Then when you come inside the building, the cell phones cut off. You can't use your cell phones in the school. They have a radio station that, that you, if you want to learn how to be a broadcaster, a disc jockey, all that, they had a full mechanic shop, all that full wood shop with all these different, you ain't got that at your school. So that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. So you don't have the same privileges, right? And you don't have the same immunities. So when it comes to liberty, you know you're not getting that. Because I've heard so many people, man, if, if I was a white man, I would like, okay. But you ain't. So you ain't getting that. You're not getting away with nothing. But it has nothing to do with that. What it has to do is the creator said he's going to punish you seven times more for what you do. See? 
It's just that simple. Or property. Okay, now you can buy houses almost anywhere you want. Some people still don't want you out in their neighborhood because they know what's going to happen. You ain't going to cut the grass. You ain't going to wash your pressure wash and paint your house. You're going to have all these parties with cars lined up all loud, music, weed, smelling like weed all the time. You know what I mean? But again, without due process of the law, nor denied to any person with this uh, jurisdiction the equal protection under the law. You ain't got that. You ain't got no equal protection. Because that's been proven over and over again. That man stood on George Floyd's neck for, I mean, until he killed him. And I, I guarantee if they was, and he was so brazen about it, he didn't care if they was taping him. Because in his mind, he wasn't going to jail, but it was just so blatant. They had to do something about that. Because we know young black men and women get shot down all the time out here in these streets by, of course, by yourself, because we know you really don't love yourself either. But it's just the fact that you ain't got the same equal protection under the law. So what you need to find out is about the creator's law. And that's where your protection is going to come from, because you're not going to get protection as long as you're dealing with Esau. You can forget it. He already said from ancient time, he hates you and he's going to kill you. Point blank. And we see it happening before our eyes. Now, let's go to the next slide. Now, a lot of people that you'll hear people, and next time you hear some intelligent person talking about the 13th and 14th Amendment, or you see some black person on TV talking about, well, our country, I can't say a word because I was in the military. And I didn't go in the military to protect my country. I went in the military because in the, in the 70s, there was nothing going on. There was no jobs, there was nothing. And I looked around at what I was looking at and I said, man, I can't beat. I'm looking at people that have been here all their life and they on dope and they working these jobs and just barely getting by. I said, I, I, I want to see something. I want to get away. That's what made me do that. But so the Dred Scott decision was a Supreme Court decision in 1857. It claimed that African-Americans couldn't ever be citizens of America. And they ain't never overturned it. Ain't never overturned this. So no, I'm sorry, but you're not, an, you're not a citizen. You're not an American citizen. You're still under bondage. You're still on the level of a slave. Whether, but when you go to, when, when, when you go to prison, then you, you, I mean, you, you, you really just a captive at that point. Cause you are always gonna be on this level. It's no, it's not, I don't care which, even if you make it to the NFL, play basketball, look, look, look what they did to Michael Vick. All his fame and everything couldn't save him. They broke that brother down because it's theirs to give. Esau owns the football team. Esau owns the basketball team. Jay-Z got into the, by the Brooklyn Nets because he was telling a whole, uh, telling about a whole lot of things that was going on, getting a lot of, of these different rappers knocked off. And I mean, it's crazy. But this is what I'm trying to get you to understand. Forget about this American dream because it's a dream. It's not real. It's time to wake up and find your creator. Now let's keep going. Now in the Supreme Court case, Plessy versus Ferguson, 1896, the court ruled that Jim Crow laws separating the races were constitutional based on the doctrine of separate but equal. Now, we just got done looking at what? What did we just got done reading? No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. But they did it for you. So they said separate but equal. African Americans would live with the Jim Crow laws for the next 50 years. They still, some of them are still around. They, some of them are still around. I know when I was a kid in the 60s and 70s, I, it, was, it, was, it was there for real. I don't, I don't have to look at videos and all that stuff to understand this, because I was alive. Now, this was never amended or overturned. Yeah, you could live almost anywhere you, anywhere. you can get a decent job, but you are not equal. That's why you're the last hired and the first fired. And when they, went, they, when they want to separate, they raise the prices of the houses and they have zoning strategies where certain zones get better treatment in terms of tax cuts and upgrades for that community. Still goes on today. And even where I live right now, this, this part of town is getting ready to be gentrified. And you can best believe for those that don't want to leave or can't leave, it's going to be rough because by the time they get done raising the taxes, they're they, they going to have to make some type of move. So this is what we got to understand. 
See, and see, and, uh, and and I mean, I'm hoping that a lot of y'all young people would do some research. You got these smartphones and these tablets, and y'all know how to do everything, TikTok and all this other foolishness. Spend some time to learn some of this stuff. I mean, half of you right now, the police pull over, you don't even know your rights, but you should know your rights, right? For the ones that you that, that you should know. But again, you got to understand that you're not a citizen. So ain't no need to argue. I'll be watching these people arguing with these police and all that. Can't do that. If they're going to kill you, they're going to kill you. Best to be polite. You know what I mean? But again, your protection comes from Yahuwah. And if Yahuwah is in your corner, they're not going to bother you. They can't touch you. They're not going to touch you. Because the spirit is going gonna, is gonna to make, it's going to put in their mind to let you, because you ain't doing nothing. The car don't smell like weed. You ain't got no open containers in there. You're probably on your way to school or work or trying to go study something. So, so y'all is going to protect you from, but you have no other protection from this, y'all. Now, the projects. Do your research. They was, they, this is what they call separate but equal. They living out in the suburbs, fat, juicy houses. You here stacked up on top of each other. And then, all I mean, what goes on in the project? Drugs, drunkenness, whore, whoredoms. All these things go on in the project. So bad that kids can't play outside <coughs> without worrying about getting shot. The old people scared to come out the house because y'all done turned it into a hell hole. See, you got to stop that. Old people shouldn't be afraid to come outside and they, where they live at. Babies should not have to be, you shouldn't have to worry about your baby getting shot in the head, but some of y'all done lost your mind to the point where you don't even care about life no more. But this is the, the, the reason why, because you got the Esau mindset. You got to get out of that. Right? Now this man saying skin color is not a crime. And he's right, skin color is not a crime. But the criminal is you and me because we refuse Yahuwah. So he uses these people to put you in check. And see, uh, when you go to the penitentiary, that used to be a place of, a penitentiary comes from the word penance. So when you went there, they were supposed to give you a Bible and you were supposed to start learning something and getting your mind together. So you'll come out and stop breaking the commandments because it's only one of the commandments that's going to get you in trouble. If you steal, if you kill, right? I mean, if you covered something that somebody got and you want it so bad that you kill them to take it from, all those 10 commandments is what would save your life. But you can't go to the Christians and get that because they're going to tell you that you don't have to do that no more. But this is the very reason why our people are in the position that we are in right now. And this is why a lot of y'all young folks don't have no hope. And this is why you out here wilding out because you figure like you don't know if you're going to be alive tomorrow anyway. What difference does it make? Because I want I want to live good too, right? Now, let's do this here. I got to stop this because last time I hit this, they did something sneaky on me. All right, let's see. Hold on. I'm going to stop this year. We're going to go back to this year. And I got to find. Okay, here we go. Now, we're going to look at this video here real quick. All right. I had a plan for her life, and she literally was living it and, and doing just that. And to have it taken away from her is, is unreal. This should never happen again to anyone. No one should ever have to experience that. This is Vice News Tonight Remote. I'm Krista Undavolu. That was Louisville, Kentucky, where outrage over the killing of Breonna Taylor and the ubiquity of no-knock warrants ignited protests against police violence weeks before George Floyd was killed. This is an extraordinary moment where the devastation racism causes to black families and black communities isn't something people want to stand by and watch anymore. Vice Media is launching something we're calling the 846 Project. That cop pressed his knee to George Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. But to end the institutional racism that enabled that horrific act, it's going to take a lot longer. We're bringing together all of the arms of the Vice Media Group to do as much as we can to try to deepen our understanding of this American uprising. Simply put, this is a what side are you on kind of moment. And we're going to need your help, your voices, your commitment. For tonight, we're going to dedicate the whole show to the story of Breonna Taylor and the city of Louisville. We don't matter.
We are the key to sharing our own story. No matter who you are or where your people come from, we are black. We are the future. And we run things. Brianna Taylor was a 26-year-old EMT who was fatally shot in her home during a drug raid in March. Police were executing a no-knock search warrant, which is exactly what it sounds like. Permission to forcefully enter someone's home without announcing yourself. In this case, the officers said they did anyway. But Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, says that isn't true. And he placed a panicked phone call to 911. 911, Operator Harris, where is their emergency? I don't, I don't know what happened. Did somebody kick in the door inside my girlfriend? Where was she shot at? I don't know. She's on the grill right now. I don't know. Walker says he thought their home was being broken into and fired his gun in self-defense, hitting one of the officers in the leg. The police responded with more than 20 bullets. The officers weren't wearing body cams, so there never was a viral video to bring attention to the case. Tamika Palmer, Taylor's mom, has been fighting for answers about what happened for almost three months now. She filed a lawsuit against the officers in April. I was ignored for so long, you know, to just nobody give you real answers. Nobody explain to you what's going on. Nobody to even apologize. Like, so I hope, I hope that it turns around. People are finally listening to what her name, listening to who she was, so. Who was she? Brianna was, she just was full of life and she would, anybody or everybody around her loved her. She loved to be around family. She was planning her to have her own family at one point, you know, and she was getting prepared to go back to nursing school. She literally did everything right, like she, had a plan for her life and she literally was living it and and doing just that and to have it taken away from her is is unreal yeah. what was the day like when you found out that whole weekend just really not knowing, not ever even seeing her, not knowing that it was actually her. You know, you're being told it's her. You're being, you know, I knew I couldn't reach her. I knew I didn't talk to her, but the, to not ever even see her, to not truly know in your heart that that's your, your child, your daughter. To finally be able to go in there and just see all these bullet holes all over into the neighboring apartments, into the upstairs apartment, to see where Brianna laid on the floor at and died. And yeah. No drugs were found at the apartment, 
the officers were placed on administrative reassignment, and there are now multiple ongoing investigations into the case, including one led by the FBI. So far, no charges have been filed against the officers. But Walker was immediately arrested and charged with attempted murder. He spent two weeks in jail and another two months on house arrest before the charges were dropped. Once I found out where Kenny was, you know, I was nervous for him to know that. I still not know the whole story, but now Kenny's in jail and I'm not knowing exactly what for and what's happening with him. And, and he's the only person who I could get any real answers from to what happened to Brianna. And just to not even have access to him at the time and to think that now that they're trying to charge him with murder for thinking someone broke into the home and, and responding to that, like, that's insane. And yeah. I'm standing here in mourning for Brianna. They made no announcement before they broke into Brianna's home and murdered her. They made Louisville no City Council is now considering a complete ban on no knocks. They're calling it Brianna's Law and voting on Thursday. The ban is something local politicians like State Representative Attica Scott have been advocating for for years without much traction. I'm disgusted that the police have continued their practice of failing to make any kind of announcements before they violently <coughs> attack my neighbors. Do you feel like any progress has been made, not just over the past month, but over the past few years? Very little progress. Um, these actions have, have resulted in us being at a point where our local government is now talking about no-knock warrants. Now we need our governor and our legislature to talk about no-knock warrants across the They're Kentucky. suspended at the moment, are they not? Suspended, that's it. The suspension is not a forever uh, abolishment of that policy of no-knock. Travel pillows? We've been wearing them the wrong way. Did you know you're supposed to twist the seasoning bottle, not shake it? This is how you do bone and chicken wings. Hubba, hubba. Twist it. Shut up. TikTok taught me. If Kentucky were to ban no-knock warrants, it would become just the third state in the country to do so. Florida and Oregon are the only others. No-knock raids, and raids in general, weren't commonly used in the United States before the 1980s. But as the war on drugs escalated, it became a popular tactic of law enforcement. Reed was killed by police who were serving a no-knock warrant. The police department falsified a no-knock affidavit. They got a no-knock search warrant. Dr. Peter Kraska, a criminologist at Eastern Kentucky University, estimates that police now perform somewhere around 60,000 raids each year and disproportionately target black communities. In Louisville, you have 23% of the population is African-American. At least 80% of these raids are done against African-American homes and private residences. So the perception among African-Americans in the Louisville community that we're the ones that are bearing the brunt of the drug war is 100% accurate. And how often are police in these raids taking down drug kingpins? It's extremely rare for the police to find the big bust. This is happening all over the country. A very small percentage of these are actually targeted at real drug dealers. About 40% of the time, they don't find anything. They've done this to the people in this private residence. They walk away and nothing occurs. No arrest, no prosecution. Why do individual police departments continue to do this thing that puts even their own officers' lives at danger. There's two big reasons. One is cultural and one is money. There's a segment of police officers that love the rush that comes along with being militarized. They love what they call real police work, which means you're using heavy weaponry to go after people. And the money involved, it is the number one tactic that generates civil asset forfeiture funds for the police themselves. Getting inside people's homes gives the police unprecedented access to their cash and to their property. 
And if you can confiscate enough of that, you can increase your police department budget. In some instances, up to 40% of operating funds are generated through civil asset forfeiture. Between 2017 and 2019, the Louisville Metro Police Department seized $2.3 million in cash, according to its own records. The department reported pocketing almost $1.8 million of that money. Right now in Louisville, they're about to vote on legislation that would get rid of no knocks in the city. There's also talk about doing it on the state level. Will getting rid of no knocks solve this problem? The various efforts to get rid of no knocks is really laudable and needs to happen. It's way overdue. The trick is how do you rein in the more significant problem that they would carry out a normal search warrant, but they do it as a no knock. They go to the door, they knock, announce, police, and simultaneously use the breaching device to knock down the door. We call this a, a quick knock, and these are much more common than the no-knock raid. So if no-knock raids um, don't include quick-knock raids, very little will happen. But Kraska isn't the only one who's been warning about how dangerous these are. A family of five in Louisville is still reeling from the terror they experienced firsthand. Mario Daugherty is a father of three and a local artist who designs sneakers. He's just going to Italy. Well, I got a professional ball player over, man. He be getting shoes. And he wanted some Malcolm X Jordans, man. I pretty much do them how, how the people want them, man. In October 2018, his house was raided by more than a dozen SWAT team officers. The warrant lists two people associated with his address, who Mario says he's never heard of. Do you remember um, the day that cops came and, and knocked down your door. Can you, what do you remember from that day? What was that day like? It was a normal day. It's like uh, I woke up, was drinking coffee, and, uh, and I was actually working on some, 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 some of my artwork for the museum, and then that's when, it's when it happened. If a dubs are 20s, then they should be called 19 dub. <laughs> Unlike in Taylor's case, the officers involved in the raid on Doherty's home were wearing body cams. Travel pillows? We've been wearing them the wrong. I'm sorry about this, y'all. I got it on my other channel, and so it's gonna be commercials in this. But I'm gonna see if I can do the next video on my other channel where I got the premium YouTube premium. Sorry about this. I apologize for this. Wrong way. Did you know you're supposed to twist the seasoning bottle, not shake it? This is how you devote a chicken wing. Hubba hubba. Twist it. Shut up. Vice News obtained the full, unredacted video of the raid. The officer's search warrant wasn't a no-knock, but they still plowed through Doherty's front door. One of Doherty's daughters, Zoraya, says she thought that someone was breaking into their home. So she ran out back to try and get to her grandmother's house next door to call the police. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! One female at the back. Do you have anything on you or anything I need to know about? No. No guns? Nothing. Come over here, right over here. No guns or nothing that's gonna hurt me? How old are you? 14. 14? I'm gonna look and make sure you don't have no guns, okay? Nothing that's gonna hurt me. Doherty's children 
who were 13 and 14 years old at the time, are still struggling with the memories of that day. I heard like a couple of names. First, I thought it was probably like a door or something. I was I was running and yelling, stop, stop. I hear like right there, like there's like steep. So I right there, they're saying, you know, I just see like, I see like a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of people pointing their, uh, assault rifles at me straight to my head. I, I, the first thing that happened went to my mind. What happened? What happened? The first thing came to my mind. My dad got shot. <laughs> Do you see law enforcement the same way that you used to before that? No. And that's that family held at gunpoint. No reason. False accusations. It's wrong. We was kids. We should have to go through that. Especially if we didn't deserve it. <laughs> You know, the first night we got back to this house, I had to sleep in my parents' room. I couldn't even, couldn't even be in my room by myself, lights, nothing. It was up all night. If I heard the smallest thing, I would think something's out there. Still to this day, if I hear, I hear somebody, a door, a door shut hard, I'll come down here and see what it is. We were living this stuff every day. It's like, man, our kids, man, they, they, they'll never forget about this stuff. And it's like, it, it just hurt, because we try to, we good, good people, you know, we, we never, we not, never been a part of the problem. The police never charged Doherty with anything. Their warrant was based on a complaint filed before Doherty had moved in. Among the reasons for requesting a raid, police said they saw a black man stop by the house for 10 minutes one day, and that they could smell weed outside. LMPD did not respond to requests for comment. Five months before Taylor's death, Doherty filed a lawsuit against the city and the officers involved. He warned that the police could have easily killed him or his family. The city moved to dismiss the case. You experience what it's like to have a bunch of armed police officers come into your home unannounced. Yeah. What goes through your head when you hear about Breonna Taylor's death? I feel like uh, after it happened to us, if if the leaders here would have stepped out and, and, and tried to assist us, uh, I feel like we could have got a change way before Brianna's death. I feel like her death could have actually been avoided. We just wanted to get our story out there because we didn't want this to happen to anybody innocent and anybody innocent life get lost. We was trying to avoid it and it, and, and it happened anyway. We, don't matter. we are the we key to shaping our own stories. No matter who you are or where your people come from, we are black. We are the future. And we run things. Yeah, right. <clears throat> you will hear us. You will see us. You will know that black lives do matter. We will not stop right. until we have justice. That's right. Say! Her name. Brianna lost her life March 13th. We love her and we miss her so much. Like this is, I just want y'all to understand like I've never experienced the pain. And let me tell you something, this ain't even my own child. So I can't imagine how she feeling right now. To see all these different people, all walks of life, all I could think is look at the world changing because I've never experienced a time in my life anyway to have all these people come to, to come together, to have the same. Do you notice that? All the people is together. And this is what it's going to take. You're going to have to get up under Yahoo of everyone, everyone that can. Because as long as they keep us separated like this, they're going to be able to rule and conquer us. Again, the brother told you on the cartoon, it's the 1%. It's Esau and his crew and all the rest of them that belong to him through their little uh, uh, fraternities and all this type of stuff. That's their job. They're going to, they're going to, this, this is just part of it, you know, but it's not every white person. It's not every other person of any other race. It's just the fact that we got to understand these things. We got to understand who our true enemy is. 
Okay, we're gonna stop right here and we're gonna pick it right back up.